moved in, we asked the builder to sweep the chimney so that we could all use it. As we knew, this had to be done. We have not had an open fire since we first got married 25 years ago. We were soon able to enjoy the hot blazing fires that winter and ever since. Although we did discover in London, you have to have special fuel due to the Clean Air Act. <coughs> Another thing we discovered, which we had forgotten, is that sometimes the fire burns low and the embers are not as bright. They start to fade. You need to bring the fire back to life again by adding fresh coals and the blowing of air using a billows fan, then sure enough, it will start to burn brightly again and be on fire again. Did you know it can be like that with our spiritual lives sometimes too? The fire burns low and our embers are not as bright. We need the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow upon us again to fan things into a flame. At times, we need to take action to stir things up again, to add fuel to the fire, so it burns brightly. This is what I'm talking about this morning. The title of my message is, Don't Let Your Fire Go Out. I have chosen just one verse from our passage that we read. Thank you, Carol. And it's Romans 12, verse 11. And it says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Or, as another version says, stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. So let's see what it is to keep our spiritual fires burning and how we can stir things up, fan things into a flame, if our fire is burning low at the moment. So let's look at the verse from Romans 12, verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Or, as the New International Revised Version says, stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. So, is your heart, is my heart, or is our heart on fire for God? Have you ever had one of those mountaintop experiences where you really felt the presence of God and it felt like God was right there surrounding you with his presence? With his arms wrapped around you, you felt the love of God in your heart and a joy that you could not contain because you were so full of the love and joy that you felt from God. Maybe you were away on a retreat, a Christian holiday, but then did you promise that you were going to read your Bible every day? You were going to pray more, even serve others in your church and share God's love with your friends. Did you encounter the Lord and you hungered for more of him? This is what it feels like to be on fire for God. But when you come back home, and we go back to our daily lives, going back to work, going back to doing our studies. We are now doing the school run again and doing the housework, the cooking, just to name a few things. Life gets so busy, we forget that we're on fire for God. The flame that is in our heart is not as bright as it once was. It's now a little flicker <coughs> it's been a week or even weeks since you picked up your Bible. Maybe going to church feels more like a chore and you're not as excited to be going to spend time in worship with God and have fellowship with him and have fellowship with each other. Our family of God, our brothers and sisters in Christ. So our flame starts to fade. It's not as bright as it once was. Are we on fire for God? So when you first become a Christian, 
Your flame burns brightly as the brightest star. You're excited to open your Bible, excited to pray <coughs> to God and spend time in his presence. A new freedom has been found in Christ. You're on fire for God. But then, when we're older in our faith and not such a new Christian, the flame is not as bright as it once was. Just like if you were to get a new car. You make sure you look after it well, you polish it, you keep it looking good. Inside and out, you spend time on it. But the longer you have the car, the older it gets, the less time you keep on spending, making it looking its best. So, have you lost your fire for God? So what could be keeping it from burning so brightly? Maybe it's time to look at what's making the flame not so bright, like the brightest star in the sky. So let's think about what's important in our life. Well, we can usually find time for what we think, well, I know I can, I definitely can, to what's important in my life and forget about making God a priority. Here's an example of someone in the Bible who made God a priority. Her name was Anna. She was a prophetess and served in the temple. This was rare for a woman to serve in the temple, but Anna the prophetess is one of those who served in the temple. She devoted her life to serving God. Prayer and fasting were her disciplines that she practiced. God blessed her prayer life and allowed her to bless his one and only son, Jesus Christ. In Luke 2, 36 to 38, it says, There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Well, it can be easy to lose your fire for God if we're not trying to build a relationship with him and we're not putting him first. Maybe this could be a season you're in as Satan loves these seasons because we take our eyes off Jesus. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have full life and have it to the full. But there is hope to find a way back and set your hearts on fire again. A fire burns brightly. It's hot and it's used to shape refine and purify. Just like a glass maker has to have the glass hot. Then it is <coughs> shaped and refined into what the glass maker wants. When you ask God to set your heart on fire, you are asking him to consume you from the inside out. It is a desire to let your heart come alive again. With God's desires, you will then be overwhelmed with love for God and his passions that you won't be able to hold it in. You will want to be more like Jesus, want to spend more time in his presence, and you want more of the Holy Spirit. So how do we set our hearts on fire for God? We need to fix our eyes on Jesus, spend more time with him in prayer and worship, reading his word, the Bible, the Holy Spirit will change you from the inside out. Your heart will feel like it's overflowing with excitement. God will help us to place what is true in our heart to his glory. When Christ is in the centre of your life, your heart and your soul will be full. You will not want for anything less. There is nothing like the love of Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.6 says, 
For this reason I remind you to fan into flames the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So how do we keep the flame of our faith burning? And how do we stop ourselves from becoming a lukewarm Christian? Well, I think we should always make Jesus a priority. This is something that we need that will need to be worked on too. We should always put Jesus first. The flame can go out. We can't just let life get in the way of us seeking God. We want the fire to burn. We must get the right fuel for the fire to burn. And then to keep the fire burning. We all know there is no point in trying to light a fire with wet wood or leaves. It just won't light however wet it is and however much we try it just won't light. You need dry wood and leaves. You need the right fuel to get a nice bright warm fire and to keep it burning. So let's look at four ways we can keep our faith burning. The first one. The first one is pray every day. We need to start with the basics to keep our faith burning. Bright like the brightest star. We can start by praying, talking to God, and having regular communication with him. This will help keep the fire burning. God is seeking communion and fellowship with us. He wants us to respond to him. Only God can open up the human heart and we will get to know him. If we are on fire for God, we will develop a deeper, intimate relationship, which is what God desires for us. Fully surrender your heart and your mind to God. Ask God to show how you can seek him in all that you do. Ask him to fill your heart with a desire and hunger for more of him. God is a consuming fire. Let your heart be set on fire. If we are continually in God's presence, this will help us to stir up the fire in our hearts by being in prayer with him. Number two, meditate. Get into God's word. In order for us to keep our hearts on fire for God, we need to meditate on God's word. The Bible. You will discover who God is. Learn more about Jesus and who he is. His love for you, his grace for you. We are his children. God's word will come alive in you. So let God's word saturate your mind and your hearts as you get to know him better. You can learn more about how he is working in your life right now and how he's working through your circumstances. So, to know God better is to love him more. We learn more about him in God's word, the Bible. And Luke 24 verse 32 says, they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They did not waste any time in telling other disciples that Jesus was alive. He had risen. He had brought the truth of the gospel from the front and centre of their lives. They heard the word of the Lord and were able to do the work of the Lord. If you want to feel the same fire, you need to put God at the front and centre of your life by meditating on God's word, the Bible, each day. Psalm 1, 2 to 3 says, But whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on the law day and night? That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither whenever whatever they do prospers. And Romans 10 verse 17 says, 
Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Number three, serving others. Well, when I serve others, I do get a joyful feeling inside when I know that I have helped someone. It could be giving them a lift, taking food over to them, just spending time with someone, listening to them, praying with them and sharing God's love with them, but having fellowship. We need to be the hands and feet of Jesus to set our hearts on fire for God. <coughs> when, you follow God's, when you follow Christ's example and serve other people, you will see God's love in action and this will stir your heart closer to him. God wants you to serve others. It's God's love in actions. So, Romans 12 verse 11 says, Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Or, as the other Bible version says, stay excited about your faith as you serve the Lord. You should be surrounding yourself around other believers and having fellowship with them. We are made for community and fellowship with each other, which is why it is so important to our faith it sets our hearts on fire for God. I go to a um, midweek home group at my church where we have a Bible study. We pray for each other. And I urge you to join the prayer meeting that you do have here if you don't already go to it. As this is a time of fellowship with each other, it will deepen your faith in God, strengthen your relationship with him, the experiences and stories shared between people will, I am sure, help fuel, fuel the joy of the Lord for others. So think about it. Or you could also consider joining in with Take a Break if you're able to come to that, which is here at church. <laughs> All of these things help us to have fellowship with other believers in God's family. And of course, church on a Sunday. So, let's get on fire for God. The fourth one, share the good news. We are all called to share the good news of Jesus with non-believers. It's not enough just to join the family of God. We are meant to bring in and keep bringing in new members. When we witness and share the love of Jesus with others, we often do it by sharing our personal testimony or even a testimony of someone else that we got to see come to fruition. Well, don't you get excited when sharing the stories? It does get you thinking about God and how he is working in people's lives. One of the best ways to get your heart pumping for excitement for Jesus is to tell others of how amazing he is and how you have seen his grace. So let's rekindle our faith to him. It would mean putting down our old self and taking up your new self. We need to be focusing on being Christ-centred and getting rid of self-centredness. Jesus can then fill your heart and set you on fire to do what God has called you to do. Be intentional and mean it. It's about setting your heart and mind on the things of God. Setting your heart on fire again. Can you remember the joy of being in the presence of the Lord? and you have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. You have felt his presence. So now is the time to live for God. Be on fire for him. Let your heart burn brightly, bright as the brightest star. Be on fire for God. So have you placed your faith and hope in the finished work of Christ? If you haven't, 
You can re reach out to Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. And I'm going to finish with a quote from D.L. Moody. You might as well try to see without eyes, hear without ears, or breathe without lungs, as to try to live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. I, I have a prayer that I'd like to pray. But as we come to sing Oceans, I invite you to come up and light a candle at the front to symbolise our desire to set our hearts on fire for God again. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, set us on fire so that our hearts will burn deep within us to encounter you with fire and devotion. Be the adoration of our hearts, Jesus. Set us free from every hindrance that holds us back from knowing you, even the secret thoughts of our hearts. Pour out your Holy Spirit into our lives every single day so that we can see the word on fire, to see the lost, saved, the broken and oppressed set free, bring justice where your justice is needed, forgiveness where there is pain, and revelation of our calling in you. How can we do anything else except what you created us for? It would be like telling the very one who created us that you made a mistake, oh God. Open our eyes to see Jesus, where we have lost our purpose and direction. Give us new eyes to see the design you intended for us to live by. Where we have lost our strength, renew us with your strength. Let us bring heaven down to earth as we walk in the design that you intended for us all along. Heal the nations, O Lord, and pour out your spirit. We are nothing without you, and we can do nothing without you. God, <coughs> we were made by you and for you. We will only be satisfied in you. We have nothing to give you except our hearts, our broken and bruised hearts. We offer our hearts to the altar of your love and mercy. Set us on fire for Jesus. Holy Spirit, deliver us from looking to other things to find fulfillment. Deliver us from religious performance to get your attention. We already have it. Pour your love afresh into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.